So we tell them to complete a certain task and it doesn't get done because they don't know how to do it. They don't know why they're supposed to do it. So there's no sense of urgency. Those are some issues that we need to consider. So ideally you have some autonomy, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get some direction from your supervisor or your manager. And the fourth component is we want to get feedback from our manager or supervisor. We want to know are we doing what we're supposed to and are we doing it correctly. Another operating management decision area is what we call supply chain management. And one of the key concepts as it relates to supply chain management is what we call the make versus buy decision. So should we manufacture the product ourselves, or should we have somebody else manufacture the product for us? We also need to decide, is the product what we call make to stock or make to order? Make to stock products means that we keep an inventory of these products. So we don't wait until we get the order. We have 50,000 of them on hand. That's make to stop. Make to order is we wait until we get the order. Like for example, with expensive manufacturing equipment, they don't have these pieces of manufacturing equipment sitting in a warehouse waiting for you to call up and say, yeah, send me one of those and I'll write you a check for a million and a half dollars. No, when they get the order, then they're going to produce the equipment. And that's why it's so difficult to increase manufacturing capacity. Especially if you're already operating at three shifts a day. So if your manufacturing facility is operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, how do you increase manufacturing capability? How do you increase your ability to produce more units? because we decided in our infinite wisdom to manage the product life cycle and lower the price. Well now demand has increased. Now what do we do? So in this scenario, we have to increase our production capability by getting more manufacturing equipment. That could very easily be six to 12 months out. They don't produce these pieces of manufacturing equipment in a weekend. It takes time for them to produce the equipment and then it takes time to install the equipment as well and set up the layout in the manufacturing facility and develop the process. Now if you didn't have three shifts already working. One way that you could do, one way that you could increase manufacturing capability is to run another shift. But that's also somewhat problematic. Because that means that you need to hire people. That also doesn't happen in a weekend. Where you say, okay, well we need to hire 500 people. Well, you need to identify them, you need to interview them, you need to um, select from that job pool, and then ultimately hire them and train them. Now in some markets, despite what you might think, it's very hard to identify 
that quantity of employees. How do you identify, you know what, what's involved to hire 500 people? I mean, just the recruitment process itself is very time consuming. So if you, if you uh, let's say, I'm gonna hire 500 employees, how many of them, how many applications do you get? You might get 1,000, you might get 5,000. And out of those, you're gonna hire 500. So there's no quick fix. That's why planning is so important. So it's not a no-brainer to say, we're gonna implement a penetration pricing strategy and start at a low price. Okay, but are you going to be able to meet demand? Are you going to be able to produce 100 million units? That's the way you can use all the time, can't you? Yes, so we need to decide how we're going to manage that. It takes a certain amount of time to make each product or assemble each product. In some cases, you have to start making the product a year before you actually see demand for the product. All right, a few more points about operations management, and then we'll move on to general management. All right, the next item is inventory. And then we're going to talk briefly about scheduling and maintenance. As it relates to inventory, how much inventory do we need to have on hand? How much safety stock do we need? When do we reorder the product? These are things that we need to consider. So we have six coffee makers on the shelf. What is the reorder point? Do we reorder when we have five or four or three? That's something that we need to decide. Now that depends on how quickly the supplier can replenish our shelves. And it's gonna vary by item. So each item, it's very likely has a different reorder point. Some it might be when you have three units. Some it might be two. Others it might be one. Scheduling. How do we manage seasonality in demand? So when demand drops off, do we lay off the workers or do we keep them employed? That's something that we need to decide. We need to decide which product we're going to make first. So we have a product assortment that's different shapes, different sizes, different colors, but we can't make them all at the same time. So which do we make first? The square one, the round one, the rectangular one? <coughs> or do we make them in blue, or cranberry, or green? That's what schedulers need to decide. Which items do we make next? And we need to have a master schedule that shows a year out the items that we're going to make. And then maintenance is another decision area for operation managers. So some of the inventory that we keep on hand, besides raw materials, besides work in progress, which is WIC, besides finished goods, 
we need to keep on hand maintenance products. It's called maintenance and repair. Maintenance, repair, and operations, MRO. Those are different, four different types of inventory. So we need to have these <coughs> supplies on hand, whether it's cleaning supplies or spare parts, to operate the business. Questions? <coughs> 